sometimes I have to tell companies, clarity first, completeness comes later. Mm. If you want to share a compelling story in a marketing campaign, become clear first. You cannot share everything you are. It's, it will be really, imagine being on a date, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to <laughs> tell everything in the first date. Welcome uh, to this episode of Redefine Growth Podcast. Uh, today uh, we have uh, Dan Smit. Uh, you brought the Story Brand Framework uh, to the Netherlands, I think, in 2021. Correct. Um, with yeah. a very special partner, which uh, you're going to maybe talk a little bit about later today. Yeah. Um, very excited to talk about uh, this framework and uh, your insights. We've all been discussing uh, some things this morning. Maybe the introduction for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, introduction about myself, uh, Dan Schmid, uh, founder of Story Band the Netherlands, um, married, uh, four kids, number five is coming. Oh, wow, congrats. End of February, so uh, one son uh, and three daughters, and then there's another daughter coming. Wow. And a dog, another child, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> trying to enjoy life and uh, do business with people uh, we can have fun with. Yeah, I love how you say that. Enjoy life. Uh, this yeah. is uh, actually in one of our taglines, solving world problems profitably while enjoying life. Right. Uh, uh, which is something uh, we shouldn't forget while, uh, while doing this. We were talking no. about uh, no. uh, doing this pods. You have a podcast as well. Yes. So uh, everyone yeah. listening, uh, please check that out. Uh, uh, go there. He's, uh, we've already been discussing some amazing guests that you had on the pod. So uh, really looking forward to this episode. So to start off... Um, the Story Brand Framework. Can you yes. explain uh, for the people that didn't read your book? Yeah, so um, it's actually narrative marketing, and it's a framework where you can um, um, you, you can use the framework to clarify your message, any message you would like to send out in the world. And um, for us, it's really important to give brands or people or companies or organizations the microphone that deserve to have the microphone. There's a lot of noise in this world. There's a lot of people that have a microphone that actually shouldn't be talking. And uh, we want to give the right people uh, the stage and, you know, clarify the message. And that's where the framework is for. Right. So uh, it's it's noisy out there. Uh, I think that's what you're saying. Uh, we see a lot of ads uh, all the time. AI is coming, which makes yeah. it easier to get like, a, well, I think a certain level of... of uh, how how um, does the story brand framework help to differentiate? Yeah, that's a good question because um, you know, just to explain a little bit about the noise first, I think the noise is actually getting louder and more and more each day. Like you said, with all the developments that are going on, is um, I really like what you said before we started recording. It's an exciting time to be alive in. Uh, and at the same time, it's a challenging time to be alive in, you know, how can you dif dif differentiate uh, in that lousy world? So if you imagine that on average, we hear 3,000 marketing messages a day, and I cannot really fact check, uh, check that, but this is what people are saying. Uh, we scroll 140 meters on average on our phones each day. Wow. which is, you know, just walk outside <laughs> and uh, take 140 passes. That's a lot. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of stuff, you know, television, apps. Um, uh, when you drive by the road, you see a lot of billboards. When you're at the airport, there's just a lot of information, uh, both in words, both in images uh, and in video especially. So how do you uh, shine how, how do you make people listen to you? And we have found that it's not so much important first to be different. A lot of people try to be different with their company, have a different sound, but that's not the thing that really catches our attention, being different. It's being clear first. Mm -hmm. So I think there's there's a lot there. Yeah, being being clear. Yeah, and I, I can imagine that uh, and a lot of entrepreneurs, marketeers, and I think you also believe uh, salespeople should be very aware of this yeah. uh, this fact. Yeah, um, uh, are struggling with this. Yeah. So, um, what would be the first step to 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 be clear? 
Well, the first step, I think, and this, this, is, this is also really about sustainability, because um, I think one of the areas in life, in business, where we really uh, just um, spend a lot of money, actually waste a lot of money, is marketing. It's energy, uh, time, and money. And, and in that order, I believe that as a human being, if you really take care of your energy, it's easier to spend your time wisely and then it becomes easier to spend your money wisely. So in marketing, if you want a higher uh, return on investment, this is the order to take care of. And one of the things that we do with companies is say, abide by the principle. And if you really abide by the principle, then the freedom comes later. So a lot of marketers, they just want to have fun, be creative and yeah. do their thing and the next shiny object syndrome. Um, and then to... a somebody coming in and say, hey, there's a framework. And if you abide by that framework, you're going to experience this success. We normally tend to say, well, I'm going to figure it out myself. And uh, this next marketing campaign, we're going to do it my way. And I, I've really come to the conclusion, there's just rules to life. You know, I, I, I love the motivational speaker. He, he passed away many years ago, but Sig Ziglar, a big motivational speaker, he always used to say, um, there's just laws on this planet mm. and the law of gravity is one of them. And if you don't like it, find yourself another planet. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's just rules to life and yeah. there's also rules to business and there's rules to uh, overcome noise and that is narrative marketing. And it's really something that if you find out how it works, those principles, and we can get into that uh, today, I'm, I'm uh, you know, willing to share all these principles yeah. Um, and just follow them. That's you know that it's almost like science. You can you can uh, predict what's going to happen. Yeah, and then I love how you say that, uh, that uh, time and money are scarce assets. That's what I was talking about just before the part as well. And, yeah. and often when you go into teams, they, they, they might know that if you spend a euro marketing somewhere in a channel or like in a, a campaign, uh, they know the return on it. But very often they don't know where to spend the time on right. or at least they don't really measure it. Mm -hmm. And and there's so much wasted energy. And um uh, this is something that we should be really aware of. Yeah. You are to spend your energy, your time, and yeah. your money because this is uh, this, this this slows you down. Yeah, and uh, in a drones, uh, how do you say draw? It it slows you down, and you waste energy yeah. in, in that area. Yeah. So, um, the principles you yeah. already uh, introduced them. Uh, let's dive into the principles of the framework. Yeah. So the first principle, and this is actually not even in the book story brand. It's really something that's behind the principles is the first principle of story is the controlling idea. So if you make a movie, if you write a book, or if you're making a marketing campaign, um, the real question is, what am I trying to convey? If somebody reads my book, what is the main message? If somebody watches the movie, what's the thing that they need to walk out with and take away from it? And the same with marketing. What's the, the the controlling idea? The one thing that I want to be known for. Mm. And this is the first problem for entrepreneurs because when we are going to spend money on marketing, you know, we want brand awareness. We want to grow <laughs> followers. We want to have more sales. Uh, and so we actually try to put everything in there. Yeah. And that's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. So what is the controlling idea? That's the first principle. I often talk about um, uh, how, how can we allow people to talk on a birthday? Uh, everyone, my mother, uh, my friends, uh, even people that, that don't know anything about growth hacking. I'll, I'll just give them one sentence they can say talking about sprints and sneakers that they can talk about on a birthday. Even with my, my nephew of, of, of 10 years old, like everybody <laughs> should be capable of explaining it one sentence very right. clear. And that one thing they should be remembered because yeah. also when, when, when well, for example, this pod or, or give, doing a keynote, what do you think? People are going to remember 15 things? No, no, no. What is the one thing they're gonna bring home yeah. and gonna discuss with their with their yeah. wife, with their the, the kids, and maybe even talk to the dog a little bit? Um, what is the one thing they bring home? Is that, yeah. that what you're saying as well? Yeah, that, that's that, that's it. You want to be known for it. It's really interesting. There's another principle that comes into place here, and that is people don't um, 
So do, do you remember the Rolodex we used to have on our desks in the past? This little round thing with all these cards with names of people? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Rolodex? Yeah. So the Rolodex works because it's uh, all positioned on last name. Mm. But in a brain, people don't put you away like a Rolodex uh, with your last name. People are known for solving a problem. Because mm. when... You know, if we are friends and we talk with each other and I say to you, man, I really have a problem. The tires of my bike always get empty so fast. And 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 then you will say to me, oh, there's a solution for that. You have to call so-and-so. Yeah. So we we tend to put brands and companies and people um, in a certain corner where they are known for the problem they solve. So mm. if you think about a controlling idea, it's not the controlling idea cannot be your product or service. The controlling idea is the problem you solve. You got to be known for one problem you solve. And and I think that's really important because if you go back to your example of the birthday, um, if you think this way, like I want to be known for solving a problem, then it becomes way easier for people to remember you because they will say, oh, for if you have that problem, you need to call Bart. You need to be at Sprint and Sneakers. The problem, it's because people can't remember the product. People can't remember the solution. And even the product and the solution or the product or the service may change over time, you know, with all the developments we have. But you're still making uh, sure companies are growing. The way yeah. you may do that may dif differ, but it's the problem you solve. Yeah, I like how you say that. And just, just thinking out loud, because it sounds quite rational, right? That there's an, a problem and this is how we... we uh, yeah. Uh, overcome this problem yeah uh, but, but then there's also the emotional part around yeah. the brand right how does that relate to to that solving a problem for for example yeah um let's look at uh famo for example they yeah. they uh, uh, i think they have a they had a very strong brand uh, they still have um what i typically like about that brand was the, the sound they included in because uh, often we're talking about uh, text and, and and images design etc but sound is often forget forgotten while if I play the sound of a Vermov bike, I think 98% of Amsterdam will recognize it's right. really, really strong. But they had such a, they, they built such an, a great uh, a brand in terms of the emotional part. Yeah. The product sometimes lacked a little bit. Yeah. How does the emotional part relate to the the problem solving, more rational feeling part? Well, there's a fair a couple of things that are really interesting in the in the example. So, having a good product doesn't mean you will be successful. That's number one. So people don't buy the best products and they don't buy the best services. They don't hire the best people. And in general in life, they don't choose the right leaders either. You know, they People don't choose the best stuff. They choose leaders, products, services that they can understand the fastest. Hmm. So it's really about messaging. Now, the other thing you bring up here is the difference between marketing and branding. Mm. And when we talk about story brand and the principles, it's really about marketing. And marketing has everything to do with just sharing a very clear and compelling uh, story, mm. a message that yeah. people can understand. That's marketing. Yeah. Branding is more like, how do I make people feel? Yeah. And for a lot of companies there's just not enough budget to build a very strong brand and make people feel something. Um, now, this is a little bit black and white because I think you can also build a brand with a low budget, but I'm not a branding guy. I'm more like a marketing guy. But, you know, when we see big brands, we tend to say, that's what we want. You know, we're going to do the marketing just like them. Yeah. But remember... They have a bigger budget yeah. and they have longer time to build that brand. Yeah. So if somebody says, I'm really inspired by Apple and the way that they do their branding and then they go back to their office and they're actually mentioned, they mention branding, but what they mean is I want to do my marketing that way. And those are two different worlds. Do you like this episode? Please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, the Redefine Growth Podcast. Um, who do you want to see next? Leave it in the comments and we'll invite that person. Yeah. And I think also they often forget that these, these are often established brands. 
Yeah. Uh, they exist for, for 10, 15, even long, longer. Yeah. Um, and and uh, I, I know that they're spending like 60% of their budget on brand, but they're already that big and, and established brand. So, and that is, um, uh, they also should take into account the, the product, right? Is, right. If it's uh, direct to consumer, yeah. uh, B2C, if you have a lot of, uh, so, so they're often global brands and have a lot of, of sales. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 they have a lot of uh, points where you can buy the product, right? So you make a lot of noise Ex around the brand. Exactly. But it's, it's, I think it's very useful to, to, to that you explain the difference between marketing and, and, and brand because, uh, um, yeah, I think often people are looking for the marketing, at least the returns on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. While um, uh, we cannot forget the brand, I think it's a very important, often forgotten uh, thing within, especially the growth marketing scene. Yeah. We're all about data, performance, conversion, um, yeah. while having that emotional part in it. I think it's 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 yeah. very good to understand that we cannot lack on it. No, true, and I love that you say that because, um, like I said, the world and life is not black and white, right? Yeah. So we 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 sometimes oversimplify things because it gives us this false sense of security. So to make it a little bit more complex, again, uh, I just mentioned marketing and branding are two different things, but mm. at the same time, they're really married to each other. Sure. And so if there's two things that I can give uh, people that are listening and watching this podcast. If they want to blend marketing and branding, you can do that. There's two points in the framework uh, where we use feeling, emotional feeling, because I, what I love about emotion, you know, even in English, it has the word motion in it. Energy, so if you, energy emotion. Yeah, right. So yeah. if you really want to touch people and get them into motion to start buying you, then you have to touch their emotions. And a problem, we just mentioned like going back to the birthday, you want to be known for solving a problem. There's uh, external problems mm. and most companies, they solve uh, external problems. They actually even sell uh, uh, solutions to external problems. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that people buy because of solving an internal problem, mm. the emotional stuff. Yeah, for sure. So if I'm frustrated about something in the office and you have a solution for that, then the, my frustration is a bigger driver to become a client of yours than the fact that you solve that problem. So, you know, for instance, if, I, if, if, if uh, we have a podcast, it's an audio podcast, and um, I want to make, I want to turn it into a video podcast just like you have. Now, um, my problem might be, I don't know which stuff to buy or which place to rent, right? But the frustration about having that problem, not knowing how to build a podcast studio or rent a podcast studio, that frustration is a way bigger driver. So I think in our messaging, if we speak more about the internal problem than the external problem, or a combination of the two is even better, you will see that you will really grow your brand or your business faster. So that's one point where you can blend marketing and messaging. And there's another one. Because if we take Apple, for example, I remember reading Steve Jobs' uh, biography. Mm -hmm. um, and he was at one point, um, they they took him out of the company, right? Mm -hmm. They sent him away. Mm -hmm. What happened next is really interesting. He went to Pixar. And I believe that there was a transformation that took place in his life during that stage because right before they um, uh, took him out of the company, he had this new computer, which was called Lisa. And that's the name of his daughter. So he was actually married to his product, right? Yeah. He was too much in love with the product. He's a tech guy, right? So he had this nine-page New York Times advertorial and if you uh, do a Google search for New York Times Apple advertorial, you will find the nine-pager, and it's all about the computer. Mm. It's It's got images of the computer. It's got features, maybe a little bit of benefits, and he's sitting there with his computer being proud of the product. It was a flop. They sold 10,000 computers, and that was it, and they sold them almost all to NASA, mm. so one customer. Now he went to Pixar 
he learned the power of story. Hmm. He came back. And the first thing that they did was a new campaign. And we all know them. It was Think Different. Yeah. Two words, no computers, only transformation. We saw Einstein think different, uh, Gandhi think different, um, you know, those kind of people. Mother Teresa think different. And we heard those words that said, this is for the outcasts. Hmm. This is for the people that are different. Yeah. And, and that is really about transformation. So the second thing you can do if you want to do marketing and branding, in your message, talk about transformation. Who will people become when they start using your products and services? Not what will they get, but who will they become? Because every human being is on a journey in life to become a better version of themselves. We are all on a path to transformation. And the more we talk about a aspirational identity, the more our brand stands out. Yeah, and I love how you say that. I remember when I bought my first MacBook in, I think, 2007. I felt really cool because there were not, I think I was <laughs> not really an early adapter, I believe, but I was uh, only one of the few of guys that producing music, so I needed one. Right. And I really uh, felt super cool that I had this uh, pretty expensive computer back uh, back then, yeah. and uh, and I was only one of the few, so I could identify myself as a, a being different. Right. Um, not sure if I was thinking different as well, but uh, I love how you say that. And back to the previous point, um, the internal external uh, triggers that you also talk about. I think the most successful companies are uh, capable of changing an emotion. Yeah. So if you uh, don't know uh, something, you go to Google. If you feel lonely, you might go to, to Tinder or some other social yeah. app. And yeah. they really change an emotion from, from feeling good to bad or the other way around. And Love it. and it's also not only about feeling good all the time because if you look at people that um, um, are addicted to something like uh, gambling or whatever, yeah. it's uh, even if they might win something really big, they just go back. So yeah. it's, it's uh, that we often as marketeers go to the external triggers yeah. Has any push notification and Absolutely. emails and yeah. but I think it's really worth it to to dive into the internal triggers. So how yeah. can we change that emotion, uh, change an identity or make someone feel better about themselves or even like if you wear wear certain clothes, you might feel better because you wear those clothes and uh, right. Um, that's when you're actually making impact on people's life and I think yeah. that's a really good trigger. Um, for for your marketing. Yeah, and and you know one thing that I. Uh, would love to mention here when you say that is the ethical side of marketing because mm. many times when we discuss these kind of triggers people think about manipulation yeah. and this is the farthest thing it away from manipulation because in my opinion my definition of manipulation is making somebody do something they don't want to do mm. and influence is helping people discover something that will actually uh, bring them further in their life or business. So for me, it's really about, am I trying to do something to somebody that they actually don't want to do? Um, and this is the ethical side of marketing. Mm. And, 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 and that really gives freedom too, you know? You can then be free in expressing. And as you talked about sales in the beginning of this podcast. Sales is the same way. How many salespeople will never ask somebody, okay, so let's dive into your problem and actually ask this question, how does that problem make you feel? Hmm. And, 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 and when they get a sort of pushback on that question, like, how does it make me feel? I, who cares? I mean, I just want to solve my problem. No, no, no. I want to understand how you feel. Because if I understand how you feel, I might be able to better solve your problem. So it's it's really you know a different way of looking at the situation, and it's about connecting with people. And yeah, that's, that's you know the brands I love, they connect with people. Yeah, and and, and there's a, I think a thin line, right? Because we are capable of yeah uh, seducing people and 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 might even manipulate because people. Um, I remember when I was younger, I went into the, the HEMA and I was always uh, uh, wondering why the bakery was all the way in the end, right? So there are so many people in the morning buying right. bread. And why don't you just put it in, in front of the store, right? You don't have to go through all the 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 the, the hole with all the discount, yeah. uh, discounted products. And now I understand, right? And then, But that's the, 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 
the easiest way of trying to seduce people to yeah. to buy something. And nowadays online, I think, um, at least I, I take that quite serious, at least for the brands that we work with. Yeah. Um, We've been contacted by uh, uh, politicians, and and we decided not to do it, even no. though if if whether or not it uh, fits our Belief f- beliefs, All right? Um, because what we we might have uh, um, some tactics that that might give them an advantage, or and yeah, and, and, yeah people might not uh, uh, know something. We so we can get them familiar with something they might right. be interested in. Right. But we there's also uh, a form where we can. Look at the algorithms, for example, right? So if you, right. you click a couple of directions, then you, you might only see that direction anymore. You're not really open for other uh, views on, on a, a topic that you're you're discussing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is an interesting topic to, uh, to discuss maybe in yeah. uh, a different uh, <laughs> pod together. Because I want to go back to the principles. Yeah. Um, we, we got the principle of uh, having, having one key message. Right. Right? H- how many yeah. principles are there? Well, that's for me. That's the first layer. That's the foundation. Yeah. That's behind story brand. And then there's eight things we can walk through. Yeah, that's it. Um, so let's start with the end in mind, right? Because mm. that's what Stephen Coffey said in his book, the Love seven it. seven um, um, uh, habits of highly effective uh, people. So the end in mind is the transformation I'm leading people to. So the, every story that's worth telling, remembering, and sharing is really about transformation. It's the journey, right? Most movies are about a journey people make. It's yeah. the insecure hero who becomes secure. Mm. Um, so the first principle is the transformation. What transformation promise can we make as a brand? That's principle number one. We already discussed that one, I think. Mm-hmm. Then when we go all the way to the front of the uh, framework, the question is, who is the main character, your client, uh, not the brand, by the way. That's, I think, a big paradigm shift for a lot of brands. It's not so much about you. And that's, for me, also the big difference because people tell me all the time, so story brand, why is that important? Because I've heard many years about storytelling. Yeah. But storytelling is really about your message and getting it more clear. And story branding is more... What is the story that your client is already living? Mm. And how can I become a part of the story they already live? Because if you are trying to come with a story and your client is living this story, you might be in competition. So it's really about getting into the skin of your client. So at the beginning, we are going to think about who are we talking to and what do they want. And then from there, we go to the second principle in the framework because the transformation is the eighth what i like sorry what i like about what you're saying is that uh it's it's not about you uh and 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 it's not about your business it's also not about you as a person because um we're we're all about making a positive impact and i I find it really well you have uh uh, even more kids than i do uh um (laughs) i don't have only have two but um i find it very interesting to contribute something so i sometimes challenge entrepreneurs to think of their 100 year plan and they look at me like if I'm crazy because, uh, well, they don't live anymore in 100 years. Um, but but that's what it's all about. It's not yeah. about you, right? It's right. about the, the impact that you can make, the transformation that you can can create and uh, something that you can contribute, Yeah, which I, I really love. I get that. goosebumps when you say that because it's really about your legacy. Exactly. you know, 100 years from now, you and I will not be alive. The people around us will not be alive. Hopefully our kids will. Hopefully our kids will. And what... You know, there there's always something you can leave behind. Yeah, yeah, and and you shift from thinking, okay, what it's uh, especially like people that are in it for uh, d- their own profit, and uh, I hope these entrepreneurs make the shift from okay, so yeah. what, what are you doing it for yourself and and the money that you're trying to make? Are you doing it to contribute something to the others, to the people on the planet? Right. Because also that shift, like you're saying, and and. Also contributing to your clients. How yeah. can you change the li- lives of, of your clients is, is an amazing focus, which is uh, totally going to change your vision on yeah. how to, to communicate. And yeah. uh, so I, I love it. So. Yeah, it's amazing. And, you know, my, my business coach always says that the leadership is uh, communicating a compelling vision. Mm. And I really, you know, when I was young, I didn't really care about that because I was 
it was all about me, right? Because I was young, I wanted to, have, I had all these goals, all these dreams. The older I get, the more I think, no, it's it's really not about me. Mm. And if I can share a compelling vision, even as a brand or even within my company, yeah. So yeah, that's way more fulfilling. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the end in mind. We go to the layer two. Yeah. So now we know who we're talking to and we know what they want, right? In yeah. any movie, within the first nine to 12 minute, minutes, we know who's the main character. It's a man, a woman, or a boy, or a girl, or a dog, or a cart cartoon. So there's really clarity about who are we talking about? Where, where is this movie about? Who is it about? And what do they want? They want to win a war, win a game, uh, marry the love of their life. There's there's something compelling they want. And it's also one thing. And that's, again, where a lot of brands get into trouble. Yeah, but we do many things. Mm. And our clients want this and this and that. Mm. But bringing it back to one thing, it it's really like sometimes I have to tell companies, clarity first, completeness comes later. Mm. If you want to share a compelling story in a marketing campaign, become clear first. You cannot share everything you are. It's, it will be really, imagine being on a date, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to <laughs> tell everything in the first date. Yeah. Somebody will go ahead with a headache, you know, it's just impossible. So mm -hmm. they get, they have to get to know you. And, and also think the, the example of having a date well, you cannot ask your date in the first sentence to 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 bring her home, no, him or her home. So, and, and no. a lot of companies, if also if you're looking at um, attracting new ta talent, the, the first thing they say is, uh, "Hey, you, you can work here. This is what you're gonna do." And I like, shouldn't you be like loading the brand a little bit yeah. and explain yeah. why and and have like a proper vision on on what what they're looking for, how you can change their lives as, if yeah. they're joining the company. So, y you need that foreplay. Yeah. Um, to have a better fit. Yes, for sure. It to might even not see be the person. The, yeah, right. to even see if there's a yeah. fit and if you get married later. But yeah, uh, yeah I think you cannot skip these steps. No, know? no, no. And so after that you've established who's the main character and what they want, then you are going to look at the problem and actually three levels. Hmm. We already talked about the external problem, the reason you know your product is there. And then the internal problem is the emotion that drives it. Mm. which ma mainly is frustration in a B2B environment, but it could be insecurity, it could be fear, it could be anything. Yeah. And then the third is the philosophical problem. Every movie, almost every movie, is about the um, the the battle between good and evil. Yeah. And the reason being is because life is about good and evil, right? I mean, you and I have choices to make every day. Yeah. Um, uh, the good choices, bad choices. That's where life is all about. Do you also believe that we only have like uh, five good? That, that's what they say, right? Why Steve Jobs was always wearing the same clothes because there's a theory that says we can only make like five really good decisions per day, and you don't want to spend it on your clothes. Do you believe a similar thing? Well, well, maybe not as um, <laughs> as harsh as he was about it, but I, I, I do, I can imagine that Barack Obama, Steve Jobs, people on those levels in mm -hmm. leadership in any organization or the world, I can imagine on that level, you want to have everything as plain as possible and all your energy. So, um, but I do find that there's things that make life easier. So this morning at seven, I went to my personal trainer. Mm. So I prepared yesterday for today. Mm. My bag with clothes was ready be, 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 uh, you know, next to my bed. Mm. Uh, uh, because I was going to put on these clothes there and I was going to the gym in my sporting clothes. Yeah. So it's preparation. And that's what Steve Jobs mentioned with, I don't want to think, you know, I want to, I don't want to waste energy. Yeah. So yeah, I do believe there's a principle there. Yeah. And also Jeff Basil says that, uh, that, that there are some decisions that can only be made on the highest level Yeah. and the rest you could, you could, you could, um, uh, outsource that or give autonomy yeah. to to other levels, but True. some some choices are that impactful. For example, Amazon Prime. He was talking about yeah. that, that that they should really think it clear, think it through. Yeah, 
uh, before you make such a decision and, and make them on the highest level. So I yeah. think also deciding on the decision that you're making yourself or you want to waste energy on. Yeah. Uh, all the other decisions, just um, uh, I just grab the clothes that I find first yeah. uh, and, and put them on. Like right. uh, and uh, if they're always the same clothes, then you're at least uh, sure that you make the right decision. In, in speaking of just yeah, and, and it's interesting that you mentioned Jeff Bezos. Uh, I've I've watched the, where he said this, and um, so there's different type of leaders as well. Mm. So there's brain power that we need. Mm -hmm. That's an energy. Uh, it's, it's 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 a lot of us live in our heads, uh, and I think we need to just go a little lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's not the distance isn't that big, you know, yeah. between our brain and our hearts. Yeah. And actually, they found that there's also brain cells within our heart, and there's mm, even wow. brain cells within our uh, um, uh, stomach, stomach. Huh? Uh, the, the area here. Yeah. But I really believe that on this level, it's actually if you go back to the level that you were, because kids do this all the time, you know, mm. they make decisions from their emotional center, so yeah. to say, mm -hmm. their gut feeling. Yeah. And it's actually easier to make hard decisions. Just follow your gut. Mm. Because I can think all day, but the problem will not go away sometimes when I try to fix it on this level. So I really also believe like following your heart. But there should be a balance, you know. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a brain. So, but, Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I love that like you say that because um, uh, we, we are wired to, to, to talk and, and, and to listen what someone is saying and not that much anymore by, by feeling and, no. and looking at the person. And sometimes right. you have a conversation and someone walks out and you feel like, hmm, there's still something in the air. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be aware of that and feel more, I think that's, that's an amazing advice. And, and yeah. I, I learned that really the hard way by not listening to my gut feeling sometimes right. and, and, and think of other priorities rather than my gut feeling yeah. and, and, and actually knowing that it might not be the good decision. But still do it. So, I, I, well, that's, I think, an amazing advice uh, yeah. to, to give to the listeners. Yeah. And if you go back in time, uh, for instance, you get a new client. And there was a warning. There was a signal that you shouldn't go and get involved in this company. Hmm. And then later on, it just backfires on you. For sure. So it's, it's, it's um, yeah, it's important. So the philosophical part in the movies Mm. is there because it's in real life the same way. It's really about good and evil. And so what does this have to do with your brand or with your marketing or sales? Everything. Because if you can say, what is the reason that your client should not experience this problem? Right? Mm. That's, that's the philosophical statement that you could make. Yeah. And so we believe, at our company, we believe that in 2024, everybody should have access to X, Y, Z, hmm. something like that. You can make a philosophical statement, and that's a big driver too for people, the purpose driver, where you feel like, man, this brand has a, has a purpose, and yeah. it fits my purpose. It fits my belief system. I feel it, it really is an emotional statement as well. So that's, that's one important thing we can do in our brands as well. And I like how you, how you compare uh, the... the the marketing within the story brand framework with the movie, for example, because I think the the really good movies people can identify with the hero or like it it, it, it does something right, and I right. think you want to try something similar yeah. with your with your own brand. And so, let's go back to the principles. Yeah, right. So what we did right now is we started with the end in mind. So we have the principle of the transformation, and then we went to the principle of who is the client. And what do they want? And what is their problems on the external, internal, philosophical levels? Yeah. And now is the first time that we as a brand enter the story, mm. the guide. And people are looking for brands that can guide them. It's the strongest character in any story. It's Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. It's Hamish in Hungry Games. It's Mr. Q in James Bond. <laughs> yeah. It's the character that doesn't change. Yeah. And that's one of the most important reasons why you would never want to be the hero in your own story as a brand because it's the weakest character. The The hero is going to transform. Mm. Rocky, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Rocky, he's really insecure about whether he can win this game. Uh, James Bond, he's, he's not that secure. And the reason being a hero is not that strong is because we as people, we're not that strong either. We have our own 
You know, I have my worries, my insecurities, my fears, my doubts. And that's why we need a hero to be not the strongest character so we can identify with it, like you said. Mm -hmm. But the guide, they've already been where the hero wants to go. Mm. Gandalf knows what Frodo needs to do in order to put the ring in the fire. Yeah. And there's actually two things you can do in your marketing or branding to become a very strong guide in the mind of your customer. And it's show empathy. Do you really understand me? And it's authority. Can you can you help me solve this problem? Mm. And authority is not really an issue. And I, I mean, you know, we, we can put logos on our website of the customers <laughs> we yeah. have and testimonials and how many years we've been there and how many employees. That's all authority. Mm. But hardly any brand establishes the emotional connection there, which is empathy. You know, I was just talking about my personal trainer. I started personal training three years ago and um, basically wanted to more get more fit. Um, I found out after two years you don't lose weight from uh, from personal training. You really have to do something about your diet. So that's what I did last year. I lost 14 kilos. Wow, congrats. But when I went to my personal trainer, I, I remember... He made an emotional connection with me. Mm. He said, Don, so you own to two companies. You're married. You have kids. It's tough eh, to take care of your body. Mm. And I said, what? I thought to myself, hey, that's an interesting way of saying it. But also, why is he saying that? Mm. And then he took his wallet and he showed me a picture where he had more my posture than the skinny, trained uh, muscle man he's now mm. and he said you know there's been a time in my life all kind of reasons I won't go into it now but there were all kind of reasons why I look like this and I was frustrated there and I changed my habits and I've actually created a program that anybody can follow to become fit again mm. and because of that emotional connection he made with me the empathy statement you know, because he came in and I was actually a little bit like, oops, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, impressed or uh, how do you want to say that? Yeah. And But because of the empathy, I felt secure and safe to say, hey, this is the guy, you know, where can I sign? Yeah. At that moment, you're not really thinking about what's the price I need to pay or, you know, how much is it going to cost? Yeah, yeah. It feels like this is it. No matter what it's what he what the price he's going to mention, I want to work with this guy, mm. and I, so I think the emotional part of that, the empathy and authority, they go hand in hand. You can have a lot of empathy. You know, I could go to a dietist and say I want to lose weight, mm. and 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 the lady says there and says, Don, me too. You know, we can have a pity party there and have a lot of empathy, but no authority, right? So yeah. they go hand in hand. So that's another principle. And, and I, I can imagine that a lot of uh, business leaders are, are looking for something like this. And what is a, a, a really practical advice that you can give to to estab establish that yeah. connection? Because yeah. I think it could be challenging, right? Oh, this is one of the hardest things to do, right? Because you don't want to become all emotional with your brand. Um, but imagine that you have a company where you sell CRM for sales organizations. And you've really created this product yourselves with a couple of sales dudes. And you created it because you missed something in all, some were too complex mm. and never got used and they became a mess. Uh, and other was, were too simplified. So you really have a vision and you built the sales CRM system. Now, an, an, an empathy statement you can make is in your founder story where you say, as former sales executives, we get it. Mm. Nothing more than that, but just saying something, explaining why this was so important to you mm. will bring about a trust like, hey, these guys are former sales executives. That's why they created the product. And, and so this is a problem sometimes we lie in marketing. We come up with a story that's not true, and I'm really for mm. truth. It Often needs to be authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Because people will feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. We have this bullshit sensor, right? Of we, course. We know yeah. when it's true or not. Yeah. So it needs to be true, but 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 find something where you can be true to your brand or identity where you can really say, this this is why we understand your problem. Yeah, and also uh, also the, the story that you're telling about your personal trainer. So 
um, showing that you have a similar experience. Hey, you've you've been there, and yeah. and, and it should be true. But yeah. there's there's often ways to find similarities, right? So if right. you introduce yourself and and you're telling me that you have kids, you have a dog, and I can tell talk about my kids and yeah. the dog that I share with my parents a lot. So there's always ways how to find similarities and and yeah. find connection. Yeah, but totally true that it should be uh, authentic and um, similar ground. Similar ground. And at the same time, yeah. don't dilute your authority. You know, you don't get too strong in your empathy statement where I say, well, are you still having the same problem that I, I'm trying to solve? You know, that, yeah. that's not going to work either. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah. Be, one of the things that, that we do is, um, I think, well, sales, how it was traditionally taught is is not the way to go anymore. Yeah. Like often I say yeah. to, to, to Stein, one of my colleagues, so you go sit next to them. So actually I should be sitting over there. Uh, but think along with them, the challenges that yeah. they face. And if you can really change their life, and if not, then you, you're not going to sell anything, no, right? So if no. we're not the company to work, and, and I think that's, Tell them. if you literally go right. sit next to them and, and think along and, and actually see whether or not we are fit or even advice, I sometimes send potential clients to our competitors yeah, because I believe that there might be a better fit there because right. they're focused on very early stage. Yeah. And I'm very aware of the things that we're good at, but also very aware of them and I think that that might contribute to to authenticity, right? That's so good. being being yeah. sure about the value that you can drive, and if you can really transform something, yeah. and if not, it's then all don't about do it. trust. Yeah, it's building trust. Um, you will never guide anybody in your life that that is not going to trust you. So the mm. brand is all about trust, yeah. and I think we have to be very straight with people. We should write way more blogs and, and articles and make more videos and podcasts about trust, you know, like mm. um, how many brands can you find in Holland that have a page on the website with this is this is the people we work for and this is the people we don't work for. Mm. Yeah. These are the people we found to be a good match with and these please go here and here and even name those competitors on your website. And say, if you're looking for this, go there. If you're looking, hardly any. Yeah. And it's interesting. We're building two new websites right now, and that this is what it's all about. Mm. Really about that honest, open. You know, it's it's also been a, a mirror for for our brand with Story Brand. We we don't mention our prices on our website. We should. Mm. At least we should give some ranges. You know, to be open with it, to yeah. be transparent. It gives a lot of trust. Yeah. Saves a lot of time too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of <laughs> yeah. talking where there's no uh fit in terms of budget. Yeah, Ex yeah. Exactly. I can imagine that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So on to the next principle. So this is a this is an a challenging one emotionally, uh finding that connection. But I yeah. think uh, the, the advice you give is very practical and, yeah. and helpful. So so what do you do next? Well, the interesting thing, the story we're writing now now is about this customer who wants something, has a problem, and finds a guide who is able to help them. And the next part is the guide will not solve the problem for the hero. He will help him solve the problem. So he mm. gives the hero a plan. Yeah. And this is most of the time really like a, a literal scene in a movie as well mm. where – where you give, actually for a brand, it's more about show people that it's easy to work with you. A three-step plan, something very simple, make it easy to understand. So imagine I'm being on your website and I feel like, yeah, they're talking about me. It's about me. Mm. This is what I want. And yes, they're talking about me again. This is the problems I have. Mm. And hey, I can relate to their empathy and I can see their authority, but I will still not go in business with you until you're going to show me how does it work. Mm. So if I'm having this question in my mind, Sprint and Sneakers might be the company I want to go to, then the next obvious question is how will it work? What are the next steps? And that's where we are here right now. So it's, it's three steps most of the time. Four, I already have to burn a lot of calories. Five, we see a diminishment of conversion rates. Mm. So really say, you know, you want to work with us? Make an appointment. We'll make a plan. And you will be on your way to success. Something simple like that. 
And it sounds so simple that sometimes people say to me, but my client isn't stupid. They can come up with this themselves. Mm. Yes, they can. But that's not how the brain is wired. Our brain wants to do two things, save calories and uh, at the same time always look for information. How are, is this person or that brand going to help me on my journey? Mm. So uh, this whole message that we're creating with these principles is really about the client and what they want and in such a way that they don't have to burn the calories. Mm. I think it's one also one of the golden rules of a consultant and and make the other one think that they came up with the idea themselves. Yeah. And and often uh, I think well we might have like the 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 white jacket, right? Coming in from from another company and, yeah. and advising or helping yeah. companies out, but it's 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 all right what you're saying and that that we should make our our clients successful. Yeah. And the, the person, right? And that's what I try to say all the time. Is, It's our job to make that person successful. So we don't we don't shine with our ideas. That's no, not no. he or she is the hero. Yeah. And and we we feed him or her with with yeah. the right information to shine. So we also should be aware of of um their manager or their leadership team or yeah. the, the, the people that have influence and 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 really in that from in that way make that person successful. Transform yeah. that person into a better version and That's good. Um One of the things I, I, I was about to ask you also is that we, when we look at buyer persona or and that is transformation, yeah. and often we 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 visualize or we 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 visualize in, in character, which yeah. is um, yeah. uh, this is Bart, the founder of Sprints and Sneakers, and his challenges to uh, make more impact, blah blah. But I also have kids. Um, I also work out, uh, and I like to go out with friends for dinner. So, Do you believe that we should look at the transformation in a person as the business person that he or she is? Or should we extend that a little bit more to look at it as a... Human because, first. Yes. Human first. Yeah. I think if you do that, you'll be surprised. Because, you know, people don't think about themselves as being business first, right? Mm. You and I woke up this morning and uh, said hello to our partner and kids and yeah you know uh took the dog out for a walk or so you're human first uh. and i think that humanity and brands is what people are looking for mm. if if we make it even in a b2b and this this might be weird for some b2b brands because they don't feel it that way but if if you can humanize your brand that way i mm. think you can make a way better connection to the heart of that person yeah the rest is just fluff you know Right. I yeah. mean, on your deathbed, you won't regret uh, that you um, uh, you won't say, oh, man, I wish I had worked way more hours and be in the <laughs> office more. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a simple uh, example, but yeah. I try to remind myself I have a screensaver on my phone right now that says, let everything you do today and let everything you say today and everything you think today be that of a dying person. Mm. And it's from Marcus Aurelius. It's a mm. stoic um, uh, thing. But it's really like, if I think like a dead man, you know, mm. you th th what what's left when you are about to die is really, don't, if, 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 if I would die after this conversation and you would be the last human being I talked to, mm. was I here to try to impress you or was I here to make a connection with you? Because mm. that last thing is way more satisfying than anything else. Yeah. So if you try to do that as a brand, and I, I say, uh, you know, try because it's the hardest thing to do because we it's the first thing we forget. That's why mm. it's a screensaver on my phone. Yeah. Because we get caught up in our worries and our sorrows and the things we still want to do. We're always trying, you know, we're either we're living in the future or we're living in the past. Yeah. And as a brand, we should live in the here and now, just like human beings do. And that's where the connection is. Yeah, and I love what you say is that looking beyond their, their job description because um, we're yeah. trying to transform them. And I think the, the the best way to transform them is by looking at their lives. And also, uh, we we easily go into certain channels, but even if we draw a line, so what does the life of this person looks like? 
Mm -hmm. uh, he's walking the dog in the morning. In the afternoon, you you don't only find out, I think, where you can trans help help him, him or she transform, yeah. but you also find out ways how to reach that person, right? Yeah. Because you're actually looking at their real lives, not only like setting up an ad and, and, yeah. and, and you're one of the uh, uh, things that he or she see, sees in the 140 meters that they're Absolutely. scrolling, but actually trying to impact their lives, their real lives, and 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 come up with a plan on how you can enhance that life. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's only eight hours a day that we're probably busy with work, mm. and there's 24 hours in a day, and of course you're sleeping as well. But you know, there's way more time in 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 sports and recreation and walking and dining and talking and socializing and all these kind of habits that we have. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Hey, so we uh, we want to make our client the, 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 we want to help them to become more successful yeah. and, and so show next? them the plan and then the next time is uh, the the next um, uh, thing is the call to action hmm. and I really uh, like what you said earlier about um, the first date and you know <laughs> trying to get somebody <laughs> to to your home or in bed you know <laughs> yeah. so. Um, I think brands do this all the time. Hmm. We only have direct call to actions like buy now, sign here, schedule a demo, schedule a demo, make an appointment. It's hmm. all about the here and now. And I think a lot of us are missing out on tremendous opportunities to make a connection by having transitional call to actions. And transitional is really like there was this book. It's interesting. There's a book about the 12 stages of intimacy in the romantic relationships. Hmm. And one of the stages is, you know, eye contact, and then there might be a talk, and there might be a touch and a kiss, and you know, all the way uh, to 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 the epiphany in bed. Mm. But I really thought, like, if you look at a a relationship with these twelve stages of intimacy, we skip all of them in business. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And we just want a new customer. Well, it doesn't work that way. No. Uh, people want to follow you for a little time and see who you are, and that's what we do ourselves as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we were talking about a famous person this this morning, and and you said like, man, I really like the way he, he leads, and I've been reading his book, and I would love for him to be in the podcast. So that's how it works. You know, there was more than one touch point. Yeah. And I think the transitional call to actions, if you, and of course people have white papers and webinars and all those kind of things, yeah. but they're empty most of the times. They're more about selling and mm. telling yeah. than sharing and giving. Mm. So it needs to hurt a little bit when I give a webinar. I gave one yesterday and I really felt like hurting because I was giving so much value. Yeah. Or I re I, I write this new lead generating PDF and I, it, I'm solving a customer's problem and they may say thank you Don mm. and um, never become a customer and then these other laws like we talked about the law of gravity mm -hmm. the law of sowing and reaping just sow give mm. be kind and generous in your brand with these transitional call to actions yeah. a lot more heroes will come your way and say. You're the guy. You're the brand that can help me to the next level. So that's that's really the next principle. Yeah, and I, and I, I love that. And I even have discussions right now. So you were talking about that lead gen. So should we actually ask for their email right now or should just give it away? As much ungated content as possible. Yeah. I think that really gives a lot of trust. Mm. I'm, I'm all for just giving it all. Mm. Uh, I think Tony Robbins said, you know, you can get everything for free with me. The reason people come to me to these b events that they're, they're not cheap I know. <laughs> is because of the transformation, yeah. right? People yeah, want yeah. transformation. So we should get really good at understanding humanity. Yeah. It's all about transformation. Mm. And, and, and if you want to, we, we were talking in the beginning of the podcast about how to uh, make a difference. Well, you are very different if almost all your content is not behind an opt-in. Yeah. Now we do have opt-ins. Yeah. But um, almost all my content is not behind an opt-in. Same with you, I think. I mean, your podcast, um, and that this might sound obvious, but 
how much information and transformation are you giving away with your podcast? You know, it's, mm. it's people don't have to become a member. They don't have to pay for it. It's all free. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and when, um, when we had our festival last, last summer, I, I, I never had like a real proper name for a model that I come up with. So I, I named it like a triple A, any place, anywhere, anytime you're driving value because, uh, well, often in, in we, we look at funnels, right? Yeah, so, and these yeah. steps, but it's not that linear. It's uh, Google no. did the research as well. It's quite messy, right? There's some, some, at some point they hear from you. Very messy. And, and then there are like 27 touch points and, and, and then at some point they're, they're willing to buy and you should, should make them a fan and, 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 and whatever. But if you're focused on driving value everywhere you are, uh, with every person, it, so that's my belief as well with Princess Sneakers. I don't care if it's the delivery guy that I bring a coffee, or if it's uh, the, the the crazy guy that that bikes around in the neighborhood. Like every touch point, that, that every connection that we make, yeah, should be a very positive connection, and we should always try to deliver value yeah. and and help them out in whatever way. So our yeah. our our co co cans, for example, we give them to him. Yeah. So so he has some some extra money there. So every touch point, everywhere. Yeah. So if, if that's the, the mindset that you have, you always try to help someone else yeah. and, and, and drive value. I think that's a, I love a game it. changer. And then you don't I don't ask for his email when I give him the cans, right? No. So that's no. that's it's okay. And it's funny because it comes back. <laughs> I, I noticed this woman who, yeah. who who walks her dog in the neighborhood always said hi and then I had a chat with her. And then uh, I think half a year later, her daughter uh, did an internship. At our, and I was like, oh, yeah, but you know my mother. She said, I was like, who's your mother? So she's a, ah, I was like, all right. But you, so amazing, you never know. Yeah. At, at one point, I really believe that, that you will benefit from it. So it's a. Yeah, it's, it's a different. And, and it, you know, the, the, more and more within me, I have this desire to go that direction. Hmm. Like data driven. Yeah, fine. But how fulfilling is it to be data driven? Hmm. And how much more fulfilling it is. So I understand, you know, business is not a phil philanthropy. Mm. But what if it is? Yeah. What if it could be? What if we are living, living on a level where one day we wake up and we think, man, we really missed the whole point of life, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is business the goal or is business the result? Yeah. And I begin to believe more and more in just... You know, sometimes Donald Miller, who came up with the Storyband framework, said, mm. I, I will write two lead generating PDFs or I'll create two webinars and one will work and one will not. We'll go with the one who works and we'll make two more. One will work mm. and one will not. Yeah. But in this, in this effort to drive value, I think, yeah, because, you know, I have HubSpot and we make reports and we look at the metrics. We do. Mm-hmm. But it's like you said, it's messy. It's not that linear. Um, everybody lives their own story and they do it their own way. For sure. And if you can be, you know, a guide or a lighthouse at some of those points, how wonderful is that? So, yeah. yeah. Do you have, you were talking about the, the transactional uh, call to actions, I think. Uh, right? Yeah, transitional. Transitional. Yeah. yeah. Do you have some examples of... Um... Yeah. So I think transitional, if you... For me, always the main point is what problem can I solve without people paying for it? Hmm. So if somebody follows my automated webinar, on-demand webinars, or my live webinar, or a lead-generating PDF they download, or they watch the video series, um, what is a problem that I can solve for people today in that thing? And sometimes uh, companies that work, we work with, they will say, but Don... I can only solve a problem if they pay me because my product or service will really solve their problem. Uh, I, I understand. But I always challenge them like, what is something that your customer thinks right now mm. where they need a paradigm shift so they can choose the right solution for the problem? Because sometimes if you have a wrong look at your problem, you will also search in the wrong places for the answer, right? Yeah. And and then they will start thinking and brainstorming and suddenly somebody will come up and stand up. Well, I think the main issue that our clients have before they work with us is that they think it is really expensive to solve this problem or it's, it's, it's really difficult to, okay, what's the difficulty? And we'll dive a little bit deeper. And then when they find this paradigm shift, that's where it's really cool. You know, for instance, 
you have this place where you can bring your dog if you're on vacation or you make a mm. business trip. A dog well, hotel or something. A yeah. dog hotel. One of the biggest paradigm shifts there for this customer was, okay, I feel guilty mm. that I'm going away and have fun and I'm bringing my dog because I can't bring the dog to with me, you know? Otherwise, I would. Mm. So it's more like a necessity yeah. than a goal or a vision. And the paradigm shift was, but you can bring your dog to this. We're more like a hotel. I love that you use that word, by the way. It's more a dog hotel than just a place where you bring a dog in a cage. And more sharing more about how the dog is going to have a great time while you're away mm. was a big paradigm shift in their marketing because they were always trying to convince a, a client, yeah, go and have fun. No, we're going to make sure that you will be jealous about the, the week your dog had. Mm. And it's a, it's a different story. Yeah. And, and I would even um, go uh, maybe a step further, thinking of how can you help that person transform, not only limiting yourself what you can do, but also think of yeah. what you can organize as a guide. Um, uh, so, for example, with one of our clients, they do hosting for e-commerce. Yeah. Super fast hosting, right? Yeah. Best hosting ever. Amazing. But what is in the mind of that entrepreneur trying to run his e-com shop, right? There's there's only like the 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 one percent that might be the hosting, yeah, right. Thirty yeah. percent is I want to do more revenue. Yeah. Uh, Thirty percent is I want to lower my returns. Yeah. Right. So even if a hosting party, you yeah. can organize a growth hacking webinar, yeah, helping your client I like that. I and, like and that. even extend your yeah. your your guidance beyond the things that you do yourself because yeah. you are a guide yeah. and if you can organize it and that's that might bring you in such a um that's uh, good competitive uh, position compared to your competitors because you're not only offering the product that you're offering yourself you're guiding that person in in way more that you, you, you because you're organizing it for that p person so that, that's i believe um that could be a game changer in, in yeah. your thinking yeah. because, uh, thinking of what you're saying you are the guide and uh, you can guide that person beyond what you can offer yeah. yourself. Yeah. And that fits into what you just shared, uh, Bart, uh, when you were talking about diving into the person behind the businessman or businesswoman. Mm. So, you know, what are their needs? And and, and, and I like, it, it should be always in the relationship to your brand. So with the mm -hmm. hosting, it can be about things that pertain to that around it. Yeah. And it's a beautiful way of being a brand. It's also way more fun. And now suddenly you have a lot of content to share, right? Because mm. sometimes these type of companies you mentioned, like a hosting company, you'll think, well, what can we talk about? Yeah. Which articles can we make? I mean, there's only so much to say about hosting, think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But your goal is to change, to transform the lives of, yeah. of your clients. And yeah. there's more than only hosting what's in their mind. And, uh, and, and that's a amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. For many years, um, uh, I thought about mission and vision and purpose like crap. Like, mm. really, I thought that way for many years. Like, you know, companies that share about the mission and vision and values and purpose, that's not where it's all about. You just got to have a good product and do the marketing right and do the sales right and the operations right, and you will be profitable. But more and more in line with what we just shared, no, everything is about your mission. Everything is about your vision. Because if you are a host, if you are an I, if we would be business partners and having a hosting company, mm. And our vision would be, man, we really want to transform the world one web shop at a time, um, you know, and have a compelling vision around that. Mm. But it, again, it should be true. It should be authentic. For sure, it's, yeah. it's not window dressing. We've seen a lot of window dressing. Why people? That's why people don't buy mission and vision statements anymore. Mm. But if it's really there, it can be a big driver of success. And and then you get into the position like Steve Jobs. And Simon Sinek is talking about that. Why? Oh, yeah, we happen to do hosting. Yeah. Right. So yeah. this is what we live for. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but we happen to do hosting, and yeah. but we might also do uh, something else in the yeah. future, right? So then yeah. it's big enough to really uh, have good. that the why on the level that you're yeah. looking for. So why are we in from framework right now? Yeah. So a little recap: uh, we started with the end of mind, the transition, the, the or the transformation that our brand brings. Um, then we decided who's the customer, what do they want, what are the problems on all three levels, external, internal, and philosophical. 
who are we in the story? Empathy and authority is the guide. The plan we give them to win the day. The um, call to action direct. We should be clear. You want to marry me or you want to go out? Transitional. And then it's all about the end where either it's going to be ending in a tragedy or it's ending in success. And this is felt throughout the whole movie. How is this going to end? This is so strong that if you mo watch a movie for the second time, you still feel the tension, right? Mm. So the, the tragic results is also being honest. We, we, it's not manipulation, but we should have a little salt in the recipe, right? I mean, if we bake bread and there's no salt, it will not really be a great bread. Mm. If there's too much salt, that Neither. won't taste either. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to become the messenger with the bad news all the time, but we do want to say, hey, there's something at stake here. This is about your success. And 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 that's the tragedy part, the 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 failure part that we should mention. And then it's more about the success, the vision we want to go to. Mm. You know, how is your customers' lives going to look like if they use your product and service? Because they will not use their brain power to come up with that image themselves. Mm. You have to create it for them. You have to show them what success looks like when they work with you. And that's very powerful and strong because that's the direction of the transformation, right? So those are the real principles that we need to figure out for a brand. Do, do you have some practical examples on, on how you can show that transformation or where they're going to? Yeah, I think I think one of the things is like, um, uh, for instance, if you would say um, hiring the right IT guys in your company has always been like, a painful, you know, where can we find them? Mm. Um, and then they're, they might be very expensive. And before you know it, once they're trained, they leave your company. So how can you come up with the right talent for your company, for your IT department? Um, well, imagine if we help you find the right people uh, in places you have never looked, who are willing to grow with your company for the long term, how would your life be? And then show that, you know, make little movies about it. Mm. Since this is about movie, use video, uh, yeah. show the story, um, tell real stories. We love real stories. We love to watch people. So, um, yeah, I think for a lot of products, for a lot of brands, it's more about people than about their product. If they would show more of the people, mm. a lot of IT and tech companies come to us because they, obviously have a hard time uh, telling the right story many times. Yeah. Um, tomorrow I will have a workshop at my office with, uh, I think, 10 IT companies. It's going to be interesting because they all struggle with this. It, it, there's a lot of their websites that I look to and there's not even one picture of young, one single human being on there. Yeah. How? So There's a white paper on it. Probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it about people. Yeah, yeah, I love and and I've also remembered that you were talking about uh, your personal trainer who showed you that image, right? So yeah, um, getting your clients to show the transformation and it's also uh, that's always better than 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 telling yourself. And I remember working with with the coach and 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 asked and asked him, so what differentiates yourself from the other hundred forty thousand coaches in the Netherlands? You have experience, have a specific methodology, and it's like. Yeah, probably everyone will explain, they say yeah. the same thing, right? Good. So by just showing the transformation that he realized with his clients, um, you don't need to talk about what what's the value or like the methodology, the experience no. that you have. You just showcase the transformation yeah. that other went through. Yeah. And I believe that is a, that is a great advice to give. Um, and it's, yeah. so, it's so easy as well right? to just go with the camera to your clients and, yeah. and ask them some questions and make a video out of it and use AI to, to cut it in, in nice pieces and, and all that stuff. So uh, yeah. thanks. This, was, uh, this is amazing. Um, um, our podcast is called Redefine Growth. Um, what we try to do, growth is often about maximizing profit yeah. and shareholder value. Mm. Um, what would you think uh, redefining growth is in terms of uh, the store brand framework and uh, your vision on it? Yeah, I love that question. Two things come to mind. First, I think it's really important for entrepreneurs to talk about the internal story in their company. So 
you can do a great job for your customers, but the most important people you have, the most value you have in your company is the people that work with you, not for you. They work with you. Yeah, good. And um, I think we need to have a compelling vision and story for them first because they're with you and you don't know how long they will be with you. But, you know, I like to think about my team I always imagine they will stay with me for the rest of my life. Mm. They may not, but that's my intention. I want my value and my company to be so high that they will never think about going away. Mm. Now, they may, and that's fine. It's their journey. But I want to live a life where they feel like, man, I want to be part of that. So I think if companies do that, that will radiate um, through your skin. Mm. People will feel that. So that's the first thing where you can redefine growth. Are, you, are my people growing in, in their vision? Mm. What are their dreams? Transforming their lives as well. How am I helping to to make sure that their dreams come true? Mm. And sometimes, you know, as long as the vision of your company and the vision of a person will, will, will be in line with each other, you can win both. And if if somebody decides to go this way, either the company or the person, that w- might go off track, and that's fine too. Sure. So that's one, and two, redefine growth. I always like to think of profit and revenue as not, that's not a goal. The result. It's the result of something you do, and I think truly, if you look at, there's this Dutch word, ambacht. Mm. You know, it's it's uh, what's the English word? I think. Craftsmanship? Yeah, craftsmanship ship. Now if you if you imagine this 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 one man or one woman really being good at a craft, yeah. skilled, you know, they they a painter, an artist, uh, somebody who makes music or somebody who's who's making furniture or but they're really good at a craft or they make boats or that craftsmanship, if we fall in love more with that process then we will never have to worry about clients anymore, right? Mm. I mean, of course, people need to know about the fact that you're good at something. That's why we talked about story. Mm. But I think in connection to the story, focus on the craftsmanship and tell that story. I think that's amazing too. And that's what I I love that you're saying that. And that's why I'm so fascinated by the Japanese culture where they're so, so they could be so passionate about something and yeah. really like yeah. uh well if you're a t- tattoo artist you first have to uh, practice 16 years before you try it on some some people right so that's the, the level of, of of passion they have for for certain things and they go yeah. into it that in that level of, of yeah that's that's such an yeah. incredible inspirational uh, thing i yeah. believe so uh and um, I don't really think that you're an expert in growth hacking and uh, doing one day course, uh, no. to, to be honest, or no. at least uh, challenge yourself to to really um, find something that you're passionate about and, yeah. and really try to be a, as good as you can. Yeah. And uh, then the money will come. I yeah, because yeah. that way you can go deeper mm. uh, instead of broader. And I think that's for a, lo- a lot of us marketeers, the next shiny object syndrome we talked about. Yeah. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? No, go back to the principles. Because they yeah. will never change, even in an artificial intelligence world. Mm. The principles will stay the same. Otherwise, it's not a principle. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, everybody should read your book. Uh, use the framework and the principles. Uh, this was uh, super inspiring. Thank you so much uh, for this podcast. Uh, um, You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Right. And uh, we yeah. hope to see you soon, maybe at one of our events. Um, yeah. yeah. For our uh, guests, we have um, a very special sweater. It's um, like I always say, it's actually only for the people in our team, but also for the very special guests in our ah, pod. So cool. it's a, an original Sprints and Sneakers uh, sweater. Wow. Um, I'd like to give to you. Thank you, Bart. Cool. I like it. Uh, thank you so much for I'll everyone listening. Uh, please find uh, Dan Smith on uh, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, check out his podcast. And uh, um, yeah, we hope to see you soon uh, in another episode. And Wonderful. thanks again. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for listening to the Redefine Growth Podcast. Another amazing episode. But there's more to come. We've got Marijn from Dopper, uh, Oliver Mama. So stay tuned, like and subscribe, and hope to see you next time.